Hello and welcome back to another Zero MX video. I <clears throat> let me address this first. I know I said the last video was my last video for a long, long, long time to come, but with the return of Zero Linux, I felt the need to create this one to clarify a few things. All right, so with that out of the way, <clears throat> let's get to it. As you can see, we are on the Zero Linux desktop. This is as the ISO ships, I haven't touched it. This is a VM, of course. So I need to, to go through the toolkit because a lot of you, I've no, as I have noticed lately, don't use it much. And you still do things the archway, which isn't wrong. But the reason my toolkit exists is to make things easier for you. And if you don't take advantage uh, of it, you, will you might end up doing some boo-boos and end up corrupting your system if you don't know what you're doing of course so let's start with this you will find my toolkit as the first icon on the dock it has my logo so it's not a start menu or anything the start menu is up there in the upper left corner this is the start menu all right down here is how you launch my toolkit you just click on the icon and you get the main menu. Since the toolkit was initially created for vanilla Arch, option one, you can skip. You don't need it. It's already implemented on the ISO. But for the sake of uh, clarity, I will show you what it has. It has an option. The first option is option U. If you want to use this, uh, ver uh, this way to update your system, you can. But I would recommend running the usual pseudo Pacman SYYU or SYU. If you do it from my toolkit, you'll be prompted with three ways to update the system. Option one is just pseudo Pacman uh, SYU. The second option is the, uh, the SYU plus Flatpaks, Flatpak update in case you have any Flatpaks installed. The third one, I don't recommend you use unless you know what you are doing because uh, it, it uses top grade and it will update your con Docker containers, your Git repositories and one, whatnot, unless you have specifically configured it not to in the uh, configuration TOML, which you'll find under .config topgrade.yaml or TOML. First, we do this one and it's just going to run the usual pseudo Pacman SYYU. So anyway, with that out of the way, oh, we have a lot of updates. I'm going to say no. <laughs> uh, because when the new ISO comes next month in September, first week of September, you won't have any of those updates. But I do recommend you update your system after initial install because, as we all know, the ISO is frozen in time. So if you download the ISO three weeks after I have posted it online, you'll have three weeks worth of updates to do. Okay, so these uh, four, five options have been already done on the ISO. You don't need to do any of them. We type Q to go back, but the reason I'm making this video is the option two, because I've noticed uh, some of you have reported that drivers are not working because they installed it the manual way. They went through the Arch Wiki, they followed some other guides online. You don't need to. You don't need to at all. I've done all the bulk of the work myself for you. You just select two and number one, uh, it will run Inksy to show you what GPUs you have in your system here. Since we're in a VM, there's no GPU. But in case you had, let's say, NVIDIA, it's going to tell you what NVIDIA GPU you have. For example, if it tells you a GTX 1080, like I have, it's a Pascal card. If you have the 20 series or up, including the 1650, I think, those are Turing. Each of those use separate drivers, especially now with the release of uh, drivers version 560 of NVIDIA. You have no choice but to, to understand this because if you install the open kernel modules based drivers and you have the 10 series or below, it's not going to work. You're going to have issues. So you need to know what's going on with NVIDIA. All right. So here is going to prompt you. Are you, use, uh, are you only using an AMD DGPU or iGPU because they both use the same driver? If you don't, you say no. Are you using Intel DGPU or iGPU only? This, it says only mark the only part. That means you don't have a dedicated GPU. We're not considering an, a dedicated GPU because the question after that will clarify. You say no in case you don't. 
and now it's going to ask you if you have an nvidia card so you say yes in case of nvidia and here uh, in the upcoming update will be changed instead of having to type the whole desktop or hybrid word it's just d or h that's coming in the next version of the toolkit so let's say you have a hybrid system you type hybrid now it's going to ask you which series do you have you have the series 900 which is 910 series or the 2000 or above including the 1650. let's say you uh, you have a newer a touring you type 2000 hit enter and it's going to go ahead and install everything okay okay okay, okay. i'm gonna cancel this <laughs> launch again and in case you have a desktop you type desktop it's going to ask you the same question Let's say you have the 1000 series. Well, if you type 900 or 1000, it's going to result in the same. Type 1000, and it's going to go ahead and install the necessary. But what it will also do, which people don't know, is it will inject the correct modules into a mod probe. I know uh, some of you don't understand what I'm saying right now, but you should start n understanding all this, because if you don't, then why, why are you on Linux, basically? So what it will do is it will inject the modules like the uh, DRM uh, thing for NVIDIA. It's going to rebuild MK in its CPIO and the whole shebang. And it's going to later prompt you if you want CUDA in case you use DaVinci Resolve. So in short, my toolkit will do everything for you. You don't have to lift a finger. You just need to answer the prompts correctly. And the rest is up to the toolkit. It will, uh, the toolkit will do for you. And again, I say you need to know your hardware. You need to know that the 900, uh, the 1000 series and below, to a certain degree, support will be using NVIDIA DKMS, aka proprietary drivers. And now, as of the latest version of the NVIDIA drivers, version 560, the Turing and above cards will be using the open DKMS uh, drivers, the open kernel module, basically. If you install the open kernel modules and you have a 1000 or below series card, Pascal and below, you're going to end up with issues because the drivers are no longer co uh, fully compatible. Before we could get away with uh, just the NVIDIA DKMS on 2000 series and above, not anymore. And on Arch, they split them uh, into two package, separate packages for easier understanding, basically. Uh, because if, uh, if they put it all in a single driver, uh, and relying on the driver to detect which GPU you have to, to know uh, whether to use the open kernel modules or the proprietary drivers is a bit complicated. By splitting them into two packages is easier for maintenance, from the maintenance point of view. So there you go. Option number three, DistroBox and Docker. I removed void. In the upcoming version, there will be no void image. Plus, if you still want void, if you select to install and configure DistroBox, it's going to include BoxBuddy. So you can still install Void or whatever distro image you want via BoxBuddy. But if you want to install from my toolkit, Void will, not, will no longer be available in the upcoming version next month. So there will just be Debian, Fedora, and Tumbleweed. And for anything else, just use BoxBuddy. So you type quit, go back. Option four is customization. OK, here. Most of them have already been included on Zero Linux. If you, if you support the project and grab an ISO, it, they're already applied. FastFetch is already applied. Oh My Posh is applied. Z ZSH is not. You, you'll have to install it from here. This toolkit was intended for Vanilla Arch. So since in Vanilla, if you use Arch install, you can select whatever desktop environment you want or window manager. There are some options in the toolkit that go for different stuff. So in case you installed GNOME, you can install a, a GNOME tool. Top three Hyperland advanced dot files. This is in case you installed Hyperland. Zero Linux lay in Plasma 6 Rice. It's already applied, as you can see. <laughs> no need to apply it again. But I need to talk about option U. If you, if you are using Libidweta apps, like GTK4 apps, since the GNOME devs hate theming, they're against theming their apps, you need a patch. And I didn't figure out uh, how to include it on the ISO out of the box. So you will need to run this. You just type U, and it will go through uh, applying the patch for GTK4. But what it will also do is update 
the the KDE Rice as well. It will update both the uh, GTK uh, Plus and KDE uh, uh, Lay-in theme from source. The reason I don't uh, install the, the Lay-in theme from repositories is because if I did, Flatpaks won't be able to benefit from it and all your Flatpaks will look weird. So every now, I recommend you run this every now and again, let's say once every six months. The developer does not push uh, any changes very often. So I recommend you run this option once every six months or so, just to make sure you have the latest uh, code in. Uh, yeah, it's a manual update. I can't do it otherwise because it's grabbing the code from straight from source. Five, option five. Option five is self-explanatory. You install, uh, option one will install Steam all in one. It will install everything you need for Steam to work, including game mode, Mango HUD, uh, it's going to install everything for uh, awesome Steam gaming. It includes Steam runtime and Steam native. And you need to answer the questions correctly. If you have an NVIDIA card, you select the NVIDIA stuff. If you have an Intel card, you select the Intel stuff and so on and so forth. Uh, and what it will also do, it will, it's going to patch the in Steam environment to allow for faster downloads and patch. Uh, it includes a patch for VM max map count thing. I know it's already included on Arch now, but it increases it further because the default value uh, implemented by Arch is not high enough, in my opinion. Option two, game controller drivers, in case you need them from the, it will install them from the AUR. It will ask you, do you want to install the DualSense, DualShock, or Xbox One controller driver? You select whichever you want, and then it will go ahead and install. The whole point of Zero Linux is to, for it to be out of your way, for, so you can shape it your way, yourself, using my toolkit, of course. Q uh, six recommended packages. This is a, just a package manager that I created. It's the curated list of packages. Seven is just a troubleshooting step. This this is where I put all everything I have learned while maintaining zero Linux. I have put everything in here. You can install and activate firewall D in case you need it. This is for Plasma only because GNOME has its own uh, firewall thing called GLFUW or something. Uh, clear Pac-Man cache. I recommend you do this on a monthly basis so you, uh, the cache doesn't occupy the entirety of your hard drive. Restart Pipewire in case you're having Pipewire issues. This is a very handy option. Uh, unlock Pac-Man DB. You never know since lately Plasma has been, uh, the Plasma shell has been so crashy. Sometimes during an update, uh, while you're updating, the Plasma shell will crash and Pac-Man will hang in the background. And if you get the message, Pac-Man is busy, you come here, you launch the toolkit, you come here and you, you restart the service so you can use it again. Activate V4L2 loopback. This is for all you guys using OBS and you want to use your mobile phone as your camera. This will do that for you. Uh, change auto login session X11 Wayland. Of course, I do it from here because for whatever reason, if you go here and you go search for SDDM and you go behavior, and you said, let's see, okay, you have to do this, cancel. See, it's not applying. I did the change, it's not applying. There's an issue with this. I don't know what it is. It's a bug or it isn't a bug. I don't know what it is. So in order to do it correctly, I do it here via a set command. What this will do is we'll replace, replace one value with another, like X11 with Wayland. So you can switch between the two, if you are using auto login, that is. If you're not using auto login, you can ignore that. W is will open up a uh, a guide on my website that I have written, showing you how you can install WayDroid. WayDroid basically is a, an Android emulator, but since it's got Way in in the name, Wayland, it only runs on Wayland. Don't attempt this on X11; it will not work. As for option F, it's Frogging Family. This is if you want to play around with and uh, various patched NVIDIA drivers by the TKG team, you're free to do so, but only do this if you know what you are doing. If you don't, don't touch this option. That's why it's in red. Options M and G are very simple. We all know that Arch doesn't tend to update their mirror list very often, and sometimes we get 403 forbidden, 404 not found, and so this option will fix that. Uh, get it, grabbing the latest uh, mirrors closest to you. As for option G, the infamous key ring issue. Yeah, same thing. They don't update their key rings very often and uh, uh, automatically or whatever. So option G will just force the update and fix everything. So there you go.
that's my toolkit and that's how you use zero uh, linux when you first install it you install zero linux you launch this tool and you go from there that's it and as you saw as i showed you you don't need to run all the options because most of them have been already implemented on the iso itself just to make your life your lives easier and i'm gonna close with this plasma 6.1.x tends to be a little bit crashy don't blame this on zero linux the developers know about it it could be related to nvidia in case you're using nvidia if you are using amd and it's still crashy i would recommend you go hammer the kde developers on bugs.kde.org so they fix the issue it's not an issue with zero linux it's an issue with kde so do not blame this on zero linux blame it on kde with that said i hope you enjoy zero linux it's going to remain in existence for the foreseeable future for as long as i can keep it alive i don't know how long i can i cannot promise you anything but i'll do it for as long as i can and i thank each and every one who has supported me by grabbing a copy and it's been a lot of you and you have taken me from broke to sort of okay so thank you so much and of course all the links are will be in the video description i'm not going to say subscribe because i'm not going to be doing youtube a long while i just felt that this video needed to be made because not everyone knows what the toolkit is uh, about so there you go just like the video sh showing me that you liked it and just comment with that, I bid you farewell.